Okay, so let us have a quick look of respiratory radiology now. So we have seen that normal chest x-ray PA view is taken at the end of inspiration. The normal film to focus distance or source to image receptor distance is 180 centimeters. Inspiratory expiratory effort is decided by the number of ribs. So if it has at least 6 anterior and at least 10 posterior ribs above right hemidiaphragm, it is a good inspiratory film. Left diaphragm is lower than the right because the heart is sitting on the left one whereas left hilum is higher than the right because left main bronchus goes above the left pulmonary artery. Then the main bulk of hilum is formed by the descending pulmonary artery. PA versus AP view very very important differences clavicles are more cranially oriented in AP view scapulas are within the lung fields in AP view. Ribs are more horizontally oriented in AP, cardiomegaly, pseudo cardiomegaly is there and the fundic bubble is usually not seen. This is a normal chest x-ray lateral view, how it looks like, that's erect lateral view. This is how a lateral decubitus view looks like where one side of the patient is down and this is typically very important for pleural effusions. This is how an epicogram or lordotic view looks like wherein it is typically useful for the bilateral middle lobes or apices. It is typically used for the uh, middle lobe pathologies. The cardiothoracic ratio is very important if it is more than or equal to 50 percent. This is important that in adults more than or equal to 50 percent is abnormal. Then in children more than or equal to 55 percent is abnormal and in neonates more than or equal to 60 percent that is cardiothoracic ratio is considered abnormal. So pleural effusion if they ask you more sensitive x-ray that is the best x-ray view that is ipsilateral lateral decubitus okay then more sensitive overall investigation is ultrasound. Investigation of choice for empyema Remember contrast enhanced CT is the best otherwise if it is not given then even ultrasound will do. So in empyma you will see this loculated pleural effusion with typically hypodense effusion with thickened visceral and parietal pleura crescent sign. There will be septa, debris on ultrasound. For pneumothorax same if air is present anywhere in the body the best investigation or investigation of choice is CT scan. But the most sensitive x-ray view if they ask you is paired inspiratory expiratory. The initial x-ray that we do is always chest x-ray erect view. The best x-ray that we do initially is chest x-ray erect view. Okay? In trauma patients EFAST protocol is done where pneumothorax is assessed on ultrasound of the chest. Okay? So pneumothorax will be typically seen as a clear air lucency without bronchovascular markings with underlying collapsed lung. This is how a hydro pneumothorax will look like. This is air, this is fluid level. Pneumomediastinum, if there is air which is going into the mediastinum, this will always produce a continuous diaphragm sign. Other signs of pneumomediastinum, you will have this V lucency near the cardiophrenic angle that is Neclero's V sign and you will have, this is very very important and you will have a spinnaker sail sign. This is a spinnaker sail sign where the thymic lobes are lifted above by this air between the thymus and the cardiac shadow producing spinnaker sail sign or angel wing sign. Then you can have in the patients having lot of subcutaneous emphysema along with pneumomediastinum the air will dissect within the pectoralis major muscles producing this jingo biloba sign. Then you have this multiple cystic air lucencies filled with air fluid level bilaterally this is bronchiactasis. Investigation of bronchiactasis HRCT chest typically you will see this dilated bronchi which are much more dilated as compared to the accompanying pulmonary artery giving you signet ring sign. Then aspergillosis the different types in allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis where the patient is allergic and has hypersensitivity in this case you will have multiple dilated bronchi central bronchiactasis central bronchiactasis filled with mucus so you will have mucus plugs and giving you finger in glove appearance and typically this mucus is very very hyper dense because of which it gives you a toothpaste like appearance. 
Whereas if a patient is immunocompromised, the patient is having neutropenia, febrile neutropenia, patient is on chemotherapy, radiotherapy, then this kind of aspergillosis which happens is angioinvasive aspergillosis and on the CT scan you will see a halo sign, you will see a nodule with a halo of ground glass, this is angioinvasive aspergillosis. When angioinvasive aspergillosis, patients are given treatment, they are given voriconazole if they are put on treatment and now the patient is responding nicely, this nodule will retract and form an air crescent. So this air crescent which is formed can be seen with two important things, one aspergilloma, aspergilloma is a normal fungal ball, pre-existing cavity in which this fungal ball sets in, gives in a crescent of air above it, this particularly is referred to as monodicine. But if it is angioinvasive aspergillosis, patient was having CT hello sign, now is put on treatment, now the nodule is retracting and producing an air crescent, so that is called as an air crescent. So just read the questions carefully, whether to mark aspergilloma or whether to mark angioinvasive. Okay, air crescent in angioinvasive aspergillosis is a good prognosticating sign. That means the patient is responding to treatment. What is this? You have a thick wall cavity with air fluid level. This is a typical lung abscess. Then in pulmonary edema, cardiogenic cause of pulmonary edema has three stages. When pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is above 12, it's 13 to 18 is stage 1, where you have redistribution of pulmonary vessels. Okay, you will have most reverse moustache sign, stag antler sign. Then in stage 2, you have interstitial edema, pressures between 18 to 25. In interstitial edema, you will have this important, remember, curly lines. In stage 3, when the pressure goes above 25, you will have alveolar edema, typical batowing appearance and then you can have pleural effusion also. So, what is this x-ray showing you? Dilated right paratracheal, bilateral hilar lymph nodes, 1, 2, 3 sign, garland sign, pawn broker sign, what is this? Sarcoidosis, silts backstaging is used for sarcoidosis on chest x-ray. On gallium 67 citrate scan, sarcoidosis shows you two signs. One is a lambda sign which corresponds to the 1, 2, 3 sign only of chest x-ray and panda sign that is uptake in bilateral lacrimal glands, bilateral parotid glands and nasopharynx. Remember these signs. Then on HRCT which is the investigation of choice, what will you see? You will see this multiple perilymphatic nodules, nodules along the fissure, nodules along the peribronchovascular system, nodules on the pleura, they make coalesce together to form areas of consolidation with background nodules giving you galaxy sign. Then popcorn appearance is seen in the benign tumors that is a hematoma and you will have this popcorn lesion, you will have a nodule with coarse chunky calcifications. What is this? If you have lung consolidations, if you have consolidations where air is being replaced by pus or fluid or blood, then you will have typical sign that is air bronchogram sign, sign of consolidation. If you have consolidation, normally consolidation does not have mass effect, it does not shift the mediastinum or the surrounding fissures. But one consolidation which is expansile pneumonia, clipsiella pneumonia, voluminous exudates produces bulging fissure sign. Collapse is when the air is completely resorbed. So collapse will present as an opacity because air is all lost but it will produce the mass effect on the same side. It will pull the trachea on the same side, mediastinum on the same side, cardia on the same side. That is important about collapse. Then cell hood sign very very important. If the sending yotta is obscured, pathology is in the right upper lobe. If right heart border is obscured, it is in the right middle lobe. If right diaphragm is obscured, it is in the right lower lobe. If the Arch of aorta is obscured, it is in the apico posterior segment of left upper lobe. If left heart border is obscured, corresponding to right middle lobe is lingula. If left diaphragm is obscured, it is left lower lobe. Remember this. So if it's a right upper lobe consolidation, you know upper lobe is bounded by the horizontal fissure inferiorly. So this is right upper lobe consolidation. Middle lobe, we know it's basically right middle lobe is between the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. So if you have any opacity which is obscuring the right heart border, it is in the right middle lobe. And if it is on a lateral x-ray, if you see a triangular opacity between the horizontal and the oblique fissure, this is a right middle lobe consolidation. 
right middle lobe collapse also will look like a triangular opacity on the cardiac salute but its volume will be less because it's collapsed it's pulling the fissures towards itself frontal x-ray will have a similar opacity obscuring the right heart border right lower lobe if there's a lower lobe collapse there will be a typical triangular opacity if there's a triangular opacity in the right lower part of the lung that is obscuring the diaphragm that is a right lower lobe collapse if you have a reverse S sign, if you have a reverse S sign that is typically seen with right upper lobe collapse, that's a reverse S sign of golden. Then if you have left lower lobe collapse, similarly you will have a triangular opacity on the left side, but typically because you have heart on the left side, you will see a retrocardiac triangular opacity. So retrocardiac, this triangular opacity, typically called as retrocardiac seal sign, on a lateral view, typically left lower lobe occupies the posterior part. So if you have this wheel-like opacity, it is a wheel sign. Left lower lobe collapse also produces this flat waist sign because of the lower lobe collapse, heart is shifted towards the left side. So all the moguls of the left heart are lost and the left heart border looks straight. Flat waist sign, retrocardiac sail sign and wheel sign. All signs of left lower lobe collapse. If you have a sickle shaped air lucency around the arch of aorta that is Luftzuschel sign, sign of left upper lobe collapse. In asbestosis, the classical picture is bilateral calcified pleural plaque. So, if you see this classified calcified pleural plaques like holly leaf and typically calcification along the diaphragmatic pleura, which is the most specific feature. Additional feature is a round atelectasis or folded lung or atelectatic asbestos pseudotumor. It is just a folded lung adjacent to the thickened visceral pleura. If you see this folded lung, thickening of the pleura and all the bronchovascular markings, you know, abutting this region, this is like a comet tail sign. What is this? Classically bilateral calcified pleural plaques along the diaphragmatic pleura, which is the most specific feature of asbestosis. Then if you have concentric circumferential pleural thickening more than 1 cm, very very important, most specific feature or carcinoma associated with asbestosis, mesothelioma. Then going to the silicosis or cold workers pneumoconiosis, if they are simple, if the simple version will simply have tiny tiny nodules, tiny tiny nodules and silicosis can have this eggshell calcification in the nodes. If this silicosis or cold workers pneumoconiosis becomes complicated, that is called as progressive massive fibrosis, then this will have this large fibrotic masses in the upper lobe. If you see this large fibrotic masses in the upper lobe and emphysematous changes in the periphery, this is a complicated version. Then hypersensitivity pneumonitis typically has this head cheese appearance or mosaic attenuation, areas of ground glassing, areas of hyperlucency mixture that is important okay so for pulmonary thromboembolism we have started that initial radiological investigation is chest x-ray but if chest x-ray is normal equivocal then what is the second investigation that is ventilation perfusion scan best investigation or investigation of choice is a multi-detector ct pulmonary angiography okay what is the gold standard is invasive procedure so it is invasive catheter pulmonary angiography that's a dsa digital subtraction angiography technique investigation of choice in pregnant patients it's ventilation perfusion scan different signs if you see enlarged central pulmonary artery that is flishner sign if you see enlarged sausage shaped descending pulmonary artery that is a palace sign with abrupt cutoff that is called as knuckle or chank sign focal area of oligemia that is westermark sign then this hump like structure wedge shaped area of infarct hamptons hump sign what is this x-ray showing you multiple diffusely scattered miliary nodules 1 to 3 mm size what is this this is a miliary miliary tuberculosis which is caused because of hematogenous route of spread then in tuberculosis, you have Rasmussen's aneurysm, which is a pulmonary artery within a cavity. In a tubercular cavity, if you have pulmonary artery aneurysm, then that is Rasmussen's aneurysm. But the most common cause of hemoptysis in tuberculosis is bronchial artery. Remember that it is not pulmonary. And second is 
So therefore, if I want to investigate one vessel in a patient with hemoptysis and tuberculosis, which one vessel will that be? It will be bronchial artery. All right. So thank you everyone.